Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bundle Month 1 Reports for a Client. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the new company file we set up in a prior presentation that being get great guitars duplicating some tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it right clicking the duplicated tab and duplicating again back to the tab to the middle go into the accounting drop down so we can open up the balance sheet report then we'll tab to the right accounting drop down this time the income statement so those are our major two financial statement reports i'm going to go back to the balance sheet and we're going to start to format these reports as if we're going to be providing them to whoever we need to provide them to in our case we're going to imagine primarily that we are a bookkeeper that are giving the reports possibly on a monthly or quarterly basis to a client but you would have a similar scenario if you're giving the reports to like a supervisor if it was an internal situation if you need the reports primarily in the united states for tax preparation possibly you have to think about how you're going to group the reports to give them to your tax preparer or whatever at the end of the year you might need to format them for giving them to a bank or something like that whoever you need to give the reports to the point is that making the reports formatted nicely is going to be a huge part of the process if you're doing a bookkeeping type of system so let's imagine we're a client for example i mean we're a bookkeeper providing reports to a client then the, notice that the client if you're in the united states and you have like a small business client for example they probably primarily need the reports possibly at year end to help out with tax preparation or something like that but you would still like to give them the reports on a quarterly basis so they can use them for internal purposes and decision making but also just to be able to give them some confidence that hey we're putting the bookkeeper information in place we're going to be here for you when you need us at year end you also want to keep in mind who you're giving the reports to to think about how detailed you want the reports to be so you might have more simplified reports versus more complex reports and how much other reports do you want to be adding to this in terms of supplemental reports that are going to be added on to the balance sheet and the income statement so let's just do a, a, a couple reports and imagining we're going to group them together i'm going to do this a few different ways we will uh give them to our client that's also going to be quite important how are we going to give them to the client we could do it with a pdf file and email it to them or maybe we could try to get all the reports on one PDF file, which we'll try to do here with the help and use of the exporting feature and uh, Excel. So we don't even need like Adobe, fancy Adobe software or anything to get it on one PDF file, which can be quite nice sometimes. So there's pros and cons to those different formats. All right, so given that, let's run this report just for January now. So because we just did one month of data input, we're gonna imagine we're gonna give this to a client so let's do a custom date range and i'm going to bring this on back to january uh 2023 january 31st 2023 now we're going to update it this is a standard balance sheet now you might have a couple different formattings of the balance sheet you might you might think about doing you might say hey look maybe i'm just going to try to give a summary balance sheet that will be very easy to look at and then and then possibly giving more detail on a on a different balance sheets now note down here zero has this really neat uh edit layout which gives you a lot more flexibility even than other online software such as uh quickbooks which is really neat uh so you've got your groups basically here and you could start to collapse your groups so i could collapse this group i could just take a look at all my assets in terms of current assets and i can break them down and hide these so now i've got 
long-term and uh, long-term assets. So now I've got current fixed and long-term and then on the liabilities, maybe I want current liabilities and long-term liabilities and on the equity, maybe I just want all the equity in one account called equity. So if we do something like that, I can uh, update the layout and we have basically a summarized type of balance sheet here. So that might be a good place to basically start with a very simple type of report. That might be the first one you provide to someone. And then if you're doing a presentation, that's often useful because then people's eyes don't roll over. They say, that's not too many numbers. I'm not gonna check out quite yet. <laughs> and uh, and so that's a good one to start with. And then, and then you uh, gradually take them into the beautiful nuance of multiple numbers uh, in future reports. Now you also might change the name up top. I'm going to call it like a summary uh, balance sheet. So summary balance sheet. And then you might want to think about saving these kind of reports for uh, future use. So I'm going to say, can I save the custom report? And I'm going to call it a summary, summary balance sheet and make customer. I'm not going to make it the default. I'm going to save it. And so now we've got our custom report there. So it has been saved custom report. Okay. So I'm going to, then if I go back to my reports, let's go this way, accounting dropdown and into my reports, then I got my custom tab up top. And as I do this from month to month, I can open up my summary report from here and the formatting should be formatted for us. And then we could just basically change the date ranges. So there's that one. Now another one, let's do another one starting with a balance sheet. So I'm gonna go in the drop down and open up another balance sheet. Another common format we might want on a balance sheet is uh, like a vertical analysis, comparing everything to uh, the total assets and liabilities. So that one's a pretty easy one to construct too. So let's hit the drop down, custom date range it, and go up to 2023, end of, or let's do it Jan, January uh, 2023 and update it. So they have a pretty neat functionality to do this report where you can go to the edit layout on this side and then we can just say, I'm gonna add a column. So I'm gonna say add a column and I want the column to be a formula based column. So I'm gonna just add a column over here and then it gives us our formulas that we can uh, that we can use. And I want to say show as well. Hold on, I don't want that one. I'm going to trash that one. Trashed it. Let's do another one. We want let's do a percent column. So we want to show uh, select column January 31st, and then we're going to say uh, select select as uh, a percent of and we want assets total assets so we're going to pick up the assets okay so i think that's it so that's takes a little bit of time to kind of get used to that but you have more flexibility doing this uh here than you do with other software so it's pretty pretty neat so let's update the layout and check out and see if it does what we would expect i'll pull out the trusty calculator as it's populating here just so we can check and see if it does what we think it should. So we've got our percentage column. So now we're comparing everything like the current assets, for example, 15219.75 over the liability or the total assets 24269.5.75 uh, is not quite right. Well, that's because I had the number covered up. 15219.75 over 24269.5.75. Yeah, there it is, 62. 71. So if I scroll down, we do the same thing on the liability side. So this is a common, uh, like you might call it a vertical analysis. So I'll call it that vertical analysis, uh, balance sheet, vertical analysis. I don't know how to spell analysis. That's not good. It was, I think that's right. So then we can custom save that one. So we'll say custom save, and I'm going to call it vertical vertical analysis, na analysis balance sheet. All right, save that one. 
So that's a common type of balance sheet. Uh, and then I could just do a normal balance sheet, but notice then you come into questions in, in terms of this one already has all the information of a normal balance sheet plus an added column. So, so maybe that's enough, or maybe you want the summary balance sheet, a normal balance sheet without the added column, and then one with the added column, right? These are choices that you kind of have to make when you're grouping uh, the reports together. Now, as time passes, we'll also have comparative opportunities, which are almost infinite, right? We can compare month to month, we can compare this month to the prior month, we can compare year to date to year to date, you know, we can compare the current quarter to the last quarter, and so on and so forth. So, but we only have one month right now, so we might talk more about comparative reports uh, after month two is done. Let's go to the income statement and do a similar kind of thing here. We'll hit the hit the good old drop down and do a custom date range. And the beginning date I'm gonna say is January 1st, ending date January 31st. So we're just doing it for one month of January. We will update it here. Now you could do a summary income statement as well, but we don't have much to summarize right now because we didn't use much of the grouping things. Uh, for example, if you had a lot of expenses down here where you grouped things together, uh, such as having utilities and then grouping things under the utilities, then you might do a summary income statement, which will combine all those groupings. But we didn't do any of that as of yet. And therefore the summary income statement would possibly not be as useful, but we can then, we could still do a vertical analysis statement. Usually a vertical analysis statement is gonna be comparing to the total income line here. So we can say edit the layout on this one. And I could say, let's add a column on this one. And we've got the percentages. So let's say uh, percentage and we have then show uh, January 2023 and we want select the row as a percent of income, meaning we're gonna compare everything to income. And that's basically it. And we can just update that report. And now we have like a vertical analysis uh, type of income statement. So if I pull out the trusty calculator, now we're comparing everything to this income line. And so that's a quite common type of report. 37242 divided by 53857. And that's where we're getting this uh, 6915. So that's another one you might call a vertical analysis. And notice you could change the report title up top. You might call it vertical analysis, something like that. Hopefully I spelled it right. If you don't want the profit or loss or you want the profit and loss and not the income statement, you can change the headers to how you might want to present them uh, to a client, whichever you think they would be preferring. And so there we have that. Now, again, I could do another income statement that just has uh, no added column, but that would be somewhat redundant, but maybe that would be a more simplified report to start with. That, that's definitely what I would do in a presentation. Uh, and later on, we'll do other kind of analysis reports, or we could in the second month, subtracting out one month minus another month and having the difference and the percentage change a horizontal analysis uh, type of report but for now let's just uh, let's just keep this report by the way if I go to the edit layout down here uh, if you're used to sub accounts with something like a QuickBooks or something like that the, the way to do that is a grouping technique so you can still do those basically make a parent account and like a sub account with your uh, reports and you actually have more flexibility with the grouping function so we might talk about we've we might talk about that later in the in the second half of the course when we start to add uh more expenses in the second month so but for now we've got this and so let's go ahead and save this one we'll customize it and let's say save it and then we're gonna save it as a vertic vertical analysis. Now, uh, analysis. Oh my goodness, my fingers don't work. Well, that's because they restricted my characters. I'm gonna delete the profit and loss. Vertical analysis. Oh my gosh, I had to stop and drink some coffee. Now I'm back. I got it now. So I'm going to save it 
Okay. So then, so now at the at the end of the, at the end of the month, then we can just go into our custom reports, just change the date and report these things out. So I'm going to close these out. And now let's just imagine we're going into our reports to print out the month in uh, reports to give them to a client. So I'm going to say, let's go to those reports, por favor, and check them out, custom reports. And we've got our three custom reports here. We can just generate them, change the date, and get ready to give them to people. So let's go ahead and I'm going to say right click, open link in a new tab. So I can open them in a new tab here and then just adjust the date if I needed to adjust the date. And then now the question is, how am I going to give them to the client? Do I want to email them to the client? If I do, I can save them as PDF files. But if you have a whole bunch of PDF files, that can be somewhat tedious. So then you can, cust you can zip the PDF files, which is a little nicer, or we could try to get them all on one PDF file. And if we're not using fancy software, we can use the Excel to do that. So let's see how we might do that. Let's first export it as a PDF file. That's the easy thing to do. We'll just say P to the D to the F. And then I'm going to put it in this folder that I've created. I'm just going to drag it on in there. So drag it on in. Grab it and drag it. Grab it and drag it. All right. And then I'll say... So there's the first report. Uh, I might, well, let's still keep the name. And then, then I can go to the next one. Let's open the vertical analysis balance sheet, right click in a new tab, possibly. And if I had to change the dates, I just change the dates or whatnot. And I could just go boom, it's ready to go. PDF it, PDF it, and then we're just going to drag that on over. So there's our two reports thus far. And then we'll just open up the third and final report. All right. So we'll open that bad doggy up. And so vertical analysis. Okay. Let's just export that to the P to the D to the F. And, and so it's nice and easy once you get your reports set up like this and you can go in there each month and possibly bundle them. Once you have them in a folder though, you might think, and notice you might have a lot more reports. You might put a trial balance in here, but, or you might, once we have a couple months of data, have comparative reports as well. But these are the, you know, just some general example reports. You could give them to a client and attach them, but again, there would be a lot of attachments. So you might also put them into a cloud drive, like a OneDrive, if you're, if you're, uh, comfortable sharing in that way with a client or a Google Cloud Drive or something like that. That can be useful, uh, or you might give it you might give it to them in a zipped file if you're going to email it. Now, if you're the other thing you might want to do is number your reports. Otherwise, it's going to go in here in terms of kind of alphabetical order, right? So you might you might right click on it, and I'm going to rename it and say maybe I don't need the summary, blah, blah, or this part of it. I'm just going to say this is number one summary balance sheet. And then I'm going to go into the get great, get this one, right click, edit that one, get rid of the get great guitars and just call it a number two. And then this one, I'm going to right click on it and edit it and get rid of the end bit or the beginning bit and call it number three. So that at least, then if you have it in a OneDrive, you give them some understanding of which report they should open first, right? So it's not just in there in alphabetical order. The next thing we could do is I could right click on this and add a folder and say, we're gonna call this reports for January or something like that. And I can put these reports in it, in that folder and I could zip or compress the folder because I can't attach this folder to an email, but I can attach a zipped folder. So I can right click on this and I can say, I want to zip it or compress it. Where's, I always get confused with the new layout that they did, zip or compress. Now your zipped file might not look like this. It might just have a little zipper on it, 
But the point is, whatever the zipping software you have, is that they, they you can now upload this to a a email, and that that's great. Now it's also still good to have it numbered inside of a zipped file, so that when they open the zipped file, they know which files they should open first, second, third, in terms of which reports you think are you know should be open first, second, or third. Now the next tool we can use is I can open all of these up and export them to Excel, not because I'm gonna give them to the client in Excel, but because we can use Excel to put all those reports on one PDF file, which could be a nice alternative and it could be somewhat impressive. And remember, impressing the client by just saying, hey, look, I'm doing my due diligence here by giving you nice reports in a format that looks good uh, is gonna be a big part of keeping the client happy. And you know, happy clients usually means that you will be happier as well. You can't keep all the clients happy. If you're doing everything to keep them happy and they're still not happy, then you drop them as a client. But if it's your fault because you're given ugly reports, then you can, uh, you can you can improve the reports. Okay, in any case, let's go ahead and export these to Excel. We'll show that process. So then we're gonna say, you can't, they, you know the saying, you can't make everyone happy. I'm not sure that's totally true. I don't think you actually make anyone happy. People tend to just be happy or not happy. And uh, and so you try to you try to work with happy clients. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to delete this. This is going to I'm just going to call this whole report the uh, uh, report Jan January. And then we're going to go into that. And so then this, I'm going to put all my reports in here now in the format. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Notice you can do a lot more formatting within, uh, within the layout here, because it is kind of like boxed up on the left hand side. So once it's in Excel, the downside of, of using this method is that the formatting isn't quite as centered as, uh, the formatting when you just save it as a PDF, but you do have a lot more flexibility within Excel to do editing uh, within Excel. Obviously you would have to do that each time you export it to Excel, but those are the pros and cons. Now, oftentimes I like to go to the page layout and say, I wanna view the grid lines and the sheet options so I can see the grid lines. They don't print the grid lines, but I like to kind of see them on the sheet. And then sometimes I go to this next tab over here and then back on over because that shows me where this uh, ending point is going to be. So you might, for example, try to center your document by expanding the B column until it until you're basically gonna hit the line right there. You could expand these items and you might actually also insert another column here, right? So that you could basically center this thing and have have a, an equal distance. You probably want these two to be the same, you know, width or whatever, but you can play with the formatting of it. The idea is now we have it in Excel. So once I have now, I'm, what I want to do on the future reports is put the other reports in another tab in the same sheet and then use Excel to print them all, not onto actual paper, but use an acute PDF printer or some kind of PDF printer print it to a uh, an actual PDF file so we can have all the reports on one PDF file. So let's go ahead and save this and I'll show you what I mean. Let's do another one because we're running low on, we're, you're going long on time, man. You're going long on time. Look at the clock. You're breaking your own rules. You're pulling too much time. I'm gonna go into Excel. This time, this time I'm gonna open up Excel and so there it is enable the editing i'm going to copy the whole sheet by putting my cursor on the little triangle i'm not going to edit anything here but rather copy everything from here go to my other sheet where i want it to go add a new sheet put my cursor either in a1 or select the whole sheet with the triangle and Control v so there we have it and so there it is i'm going to go to the second tab and back on over 
and I can see if it fits on a sheet, it fits on a sheet. So maybe this one I make a little bit larger. Again, I might put another buffer column by right clicking. Let's zoom in, right clicking and insert. So we have like a little buffer on this side and these two should probably be the same width or so, something like that. I don't know. So it looks, but looks pretty good on the form. That's not the same size. What are you talking about? There they are. Okay. So you probably want to get those margins to be the same size as these margins too, but I'm not going to get overly technical here. So that looks good. Uh, okay. Uh, and so I'm not going to get into the formatting too much, but you could go into more format. I'm going to go to the next tab. Same thing. Uh, export this one as well and then open it up open it up and I'm just gonna copy it again so I'll say enable the editing triangle selecting the entire sheet right click and copy and bringing that over I'm gonna hit another tab down here and say either in a1 or select the whole sheet right click and paste it paste it por favor and then I'm gonna lay out tab. Here's the end line. So let's insert another column. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Didn't want to do it. Why didn't you want to do what I said? Insert, there we go. All right, and then we'll make this one a little larger. Something like that, for example, for a hamplo. So this is, let's, the second one is going to be vert, vert balance sheet. And this third one I'm going to say is vert income statement. Okay. So then if I want to print these things out on one PDF file, I can go to the first file tab. I can go into the printing option. Now, if you don't have a, this, a PDF printer, you can look online for something called the cute PDF uh, writer. I think it's free. Uh, I, it was when I downloaded it and it's, it works well for me. I've used it for years. It's great. Uh, you know, as far as, I mean, I've, I don't, I, I think it's safe to download and, unless the PDF, unless the cute PDF people are spying on me and I downloaded malware while I did it, which I wouldn't be surprised these days. I don't know, but <laughs> it seems to work okay for me. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's good. That's what I use. So I'm going to go to that one uh cute pdf printer probably it's just like i probably got china spying on me now i i downloaded it from TikTok or something i don't know no it's good i think print uh, i want to print the entire workbook and then if i tab through this so this is what it looks like so there's the three pages so now they're all on one pdf let's print it and here we go here we go so we're gonna go to the desktop and uh that's not the desktop i want to go into zero my zero folder look at all this garbage clean up your desktop for crying out okay whatever whatever just move on report it's going to go into the reports here so we're going to go ahead and save it uh, as a PDF. Your desk, your desktop is dirty. It's got stuff on it. What mine's organized. You just don't understand my filing system. So if we go into here, <clears throat> month one, now we can give these reports to people in an Excel format if we so choose, but we also have the option of attaching this PDF file. So they're all on one file, which it's kind of neat and again it can be kind of an, a, a little bit impressive because you know a lot of people won't do that extra step and so and and what you want to do again is to make your you know if you could do that without too much effort and put a little bit of extra extra uh time into the report that can go a long way with client confidence